What's going on guys, I'm Hunter with AM Electronics and today we're going to go over CAN sensor module setup as well as some troubleshooting steps. So let's get right to it. If you don't know what a CAN sensor module is, simply put, it's the easiest way to add additional channels to your CD7 dash display. Whether you already have a device sending information over via CAN, such as an ECU, or you have no device sending information over, we have our six channel CAN sensor module that gives you two zero to five volt analog inputs, two thermistor resistance base inputs, one digital input, and one dedicated fuel level input from zero to 250 ohms. Then we have our 22 channel CAN sensor module, which gives you multiple pressures, temps, digitals, and VR inputs for connecting a variety of different sensors to your device. The benefit to the 22 channel CAN sensor module is you can also daisy chain two of them together for a total of 44 channels. You can do that simply by taking off the back cover and switching the jumpers on the back. After you've decided which CAN sensor module will suit your needs the best, the next step will be wiring it in. The easiest way to wire the CAN sensor module to your CD7 display is by using one of our CAN hubs. The AEM 4-port CAN hub allows you to wire in your CAN sensor modules very easily by accepting the 4-pin DTM AEM net connectors. This allows you to very quickly wire in multiple devices all to the same CAN network so you can get that data right on your display. Now that your CAN sensor module is wired into your CD7 display, you're going to jump into the Dash Design software and configure your layout for the sensors that you've wired in. Once we've opened Dash Design 2, we'll jump into our current layout and then head to the CAN tab to go through the configuration for adding the channels that you've wired in to your actual display. So first, we'll head down to the CAN tab. Make sure we're on port 1 as that's where these units are wired in. We'll make sure that the baud rate is set to 500k. Make sure our terminating resistor is selected. And then we'll jump down to the import CAN. Click on import CAN DBC. Then we'll select the DBC file for the module that we're using. We'll quickly first take a look at the 22 channel CAN sensor module DBC. Hit open. Now, after the DBC is opened, you're going to have the option to go through and select the channels that you're using. Now, if you're only using one 22 channel CAN sensor module, you'll want to make sure that the AEM underscore CSM underscore 2 is deselected. That'll deselect all of these additional channels to clean up your layout a bit. Then, you'll want to go through and only have the channels that you're using selected. For example, if you're using the analog voltages 1, 2, 3, and 4, simply check those boxes, and then select OK to import them. By leaving all of the boxes checked, that'll create a number of additional channels that'll clutter your layout immensely. Now, for the six channel CSM, it's the same process. We're gonna make sure that we're looking at port one, the baud rate set to 500, and the terminating resistor is checked. We'll then go to import CAN, import CAN DBC, select the DBC file for the six channel CAN sensor module, select open, and then once again, only select the channels that we're using. We're just gonna be using analog volts three. After importing that channel, it then creates another channel in your channels tab that you then could use to scale that reading. For example, if you have a pressure sensor wired in, you then would create a new channel, name the channel coolant pressure, primary input will be the analog channel that we just imported. So you'll find that from the list. Analog volts EXT3, press OK. Then you'll scale it, depending on the sensor you're using, you could use our sensor library to quickly configure that channel. For example, for coolant pressure, we could use a 0 to 100 PSI sensor. The display units are automatically configured and you're good to go. Next, you can add the channel to your screen simply by dragging down the numeric value, then adding a tag, coolant pressure, and the input being the coolant pressure channel we just created. Next, we'll go to File, save the setup, then File, Upload to Display, Make sure your USB cable is connected. Select Upload. 
So we were able to upload our new layout with the added channel to our CD7 display, and we have it showing up right next to all of our other data. Now, if you got to this point, and for whatever reason, your CAN data isn't showing up, we can go through a bit of troubleshooting right now. The first step that you'll wanna do is you'll wanna add in an additional channel. Now, at the top left, you'll see a channel that I added into the layout. This is a diagnostic channel that's set up in every single layout. Just need to add it to the display. You can do that by going to the dynamic text display, adding a dynamic text display element to your layout. Then you can select the CAN1 status channel. The CAN1 status channel can show a couple of different things. It might say CAN1 OK. That's letting you know that your device is likely wired incorrectly. However, if the channel is still not showing up, there may be a wiring problem either from the CAN sensor module to the sensor itself or something wrong in the setup of the channel itself. The next item that I've seen is CAN1 disconnected. CAN1 disconnected means that there's likely a problem in your CAN bus wiring. Easiest thing to do is to try flipping CAN high and low on your CAN sensor module to see if it's just a simple wire flip issue. Another thing you can do is to take your multimeter and when in doubt, beep it out. Check and make sure that you have continuity at both ends of the bus from CAN plus to plus and CAN minus to minus. If you're getting the CAN1 timeout error, you wanna take a close look at your CAN setup tab. Make sure that the channels that you're trying to get are on the setup tab, then double check and make sure that your CAN wiring from the module to the dash is correct. And lastly, when the dash is showing CAN1 error, that's typically an issue with termination at one end of the bus or the other. In a CAN bus network, you need a 120 ohm terminating resistor at both ends of the bus. The dash has a terminating resistor internal to it that's software selectable, so you wanna make sure that's checked. Our 22 channel CAN sensor module has a terminating resistor inside on a jumper. The six channel CAN sensor module will need a terminating resistor in if the, it's the only other system on the bus. So if you already have a 22 channel or an Infinity ECU and you're just adding in the six channel CAN sensor module, an additional terminating resistor is not needed. After checking all your wiring and double checking all your wiring, the easiest next step to take is to do a simple demo layout. A demo layout's a great step to take that could help in configuring a single channel and dialing out any possible errors. To make a demo layout, simply save your existing layout, then go to File, New Setup, and we're just gonna do a quick setup for a single channel to see what it shows. So we'll jump to our CAN tab, Make sure we're looking at port one, where our CAN sensor module is wired. Make sure our baud rate's set to 500. Terminating resistors checked on. And then we'll import that single channel that we wired in. The six channel CAN sensor module, analog volts three. We'll go to our channels tab, quickly configure that channel for our coolant pressure sensor. Select the primary input as the analog volts three and select the sensor from our dropdown. Now, at this time, it's also a good idea to have the sensor data sheet handy so that you could reference the voltage you see on the dash with the pressure that you would expect. For example, with the vehicle not running, I would expect this pressure sensor to read zero PSI and show 0.5 volts. Then you can jump over to screen one, add a couple of values to your display as well as text labels Name this one volts. Make sure that your inputs are defined. And at this point too, it's a good idea to go ahead and add back in that same CAN status channel that we were looking at previously. Go ahead, select file, save, give the test layout a name and save it. Then upload it to your display. Now in this case, I uploaded everything to the display and we can see both of my tags that say volts and pressure. However, I don't have anything displayed for either of my values and my CAN channel has showed me CAN1 receive timeout. This is happening because my CAN sensor module actually is not plugged in. If the CAN sensor module is not powered or not connected correctly, the dash could show this. 
Now we just plugged in the CAN sensor module, reconnected everything, however, the CAN1 status still shows disconnected. I took another look at the wiring, and turns out that I had my CAN high and low flipped. You can go ahead, fix that wiring change, connect everything back up, and now CAN1 says OK. Now the last item that I've seen the CAN1 status show is CAN1 warning. And this is typically happening when there is improper terminating resistors at one end of the bus. This could be on the dash side of things, or on the CAN module side of things, or in a different part of the network. You wanna make sure that you have your terminating resistors at each end of the bus. In this case, I simply forgot to check the terminating resistor on in my layout, which resulted in this error. This error can also show up if you're just using the six channel CSM on the CAN1 network with no other devices and didn't wire in an additional terminating resistor. A couple items that I like to have on hand when troubleshooting these sort of things are some small needle nose pliers to take apart the DTM connectors, a small pick, also helpful when looking to de-pin and switch around wires, and then finally, a multimeter to double check your voltages and make sure things are connected where you think they are. After everything's wired in, your CAN sensor module to your dash, and you're not getting the data you need at your dash, the first thing I like to do to bust out my multimeter, set it to voltage, and double check that I have 12 volts at all the places I need 12 volts. Then go through, set my multimeter to continuity, and to check and make sure that my CAN high and low are then going to the appropriate locations as well. After wiring's confirmed, then you can jump into some of the other troubleshooting steps. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. We'll answer them as soon as we can. Be sure to like the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can get a notification every Thursday. And thank you for watching.